We are here because a lot of you want to learn how to efficiently market your business in just 20 minutes a day. So my name is Desiree Hellick. I am the chief queen bee here at Clarence Services. Um, we are a digital marketing firm and we are known for being the creators of the ultimate marketing implementation plan. And so what that means is that it's a very unique marketing approach when we help you with your business. It's a six month plan. And what it does is we, if you have a team with no direction, um, then you would, you know, work with us on the worker bee plan where you have a dedicated marketing advisor and uh, you would have 30 minute weekly support calls with us. You would have, we would, depending on what your pain points are in your marketing plan, we would walk you through um, six different modules in our program. So the assessment phase where that's like auditing and goal setting, uh, building your foundation from a marketing perspective, lead generation. Uh, we give you plans, templates, and roadmaps in our learning management system that you have full access to. Uh, we work on, on very largely thought leadership, which we're going to talk a lot about today. And then we help you with measuring your success with metrics. Um, so that's, that's sort of what's involved in the program. And then how it works is you have weekly support calls with your dedicated marketing advisor. Uh, you have weekly accountability checks and your advisor will give you a task list every week so that you can work on those tasks. Um, you would work through those modules depending on where your pain points are. So it's not chronological. You actually start wherever your biggest pain points are from a marketing perspective. Um, and then you will have roadmaps and templates and guidelines through the learning management system where you can just, um, you know, open up a document and that will give you a plan for blogging or social media or email marketing um, or, you know, building your website, that type of thing. And then you'll have a program success checklist, which is awesome because you can see your accomplishments every week and every month over the six month plan. Um, then you also have a customized Google workspace where you communicate real time with your marketing advisor and anything you want them to look at or edit, um, you will have full access to them. So it's a, a different plan than your usual marketing, um, you know, outsourced marketing agency. And we just wanted to provide so much value for our clients. So that's what the ultimate marketing implementation plan is. Um, if you don't have a team, then we do the beekeeper plan where we literally, we're an extension of your team. We do everything for you. Um, so that just gives you a little bit about what that is and what we are all about here at Clarence. And today we, this is an overview of what we're going to talk about. Um, first of all, how to stay focused. If you're anything like me, I am very easily distracted. Um, entrepreneurs, I think, have that uh, in common and probably a lot of professionals out there. I think a lot of you are in financial planning or you're a consultant of some sort. Some of you are salespeople or B2B people. Um, we probably all have the same habits of not being able to focus. So we're going to go over how we can do that. If we are going to learn to market ourselves in 20 minutes a day, you need to have some sort of focus. We are going to go over some of the tools that uh, we can use and technology to make our marketing lives easier. We will then go over a weekly schedule, Monday to Friday, what you're going to be focusing on each day. And then we will go more granular into each of those days per week and exactly what increments of time you're going to be spending on which marketing activity. And then most of this is related to thought leadership. If any of you know anything about marketing, thought leadership is very, very important in any industry. If you can show and prove to your audience that you are an expert in your industry, you are definitely going to get a lot of interest and a lot of traffic on your website. People are going to want to work with you. So um, thought leadership is definitely key. All right, so we're gonna be very active in the chat today. Um, here's the first question. Are you the type of person who can easily focus? Yes or no in the chat? Can you easily focus? No, <laughs> no way. 
Yeah. Okay. So most of you are like me. All right. So we're going to teach you how you can focus first. It's not going to take up too much time, but we're going to give you a couple of tips on that. Um, and if you are a person that can easily focus, this is just going to be easier for you. All right. So let's move on to how we can focus. So the first thing on the list is I want you to be an essentialist. And what that means is I read a book called Essentialism from Gregory McEwen. And I feel like I talk about this in every single one of my webinars just briefly, but it's a really great book for your professional life or for your personal life. And what it does is it teaches you that I remember being in the corporate role world and my bosses would give me a list of 10 different items, maybe 20 or 40 things. And they'd say, these are your priorities. But if all of these are priorities, none of them are a priority, right? So you have to make sure you look at that list and you decide what needs to be done right now and then focus on that. Because what happens is we have only so much energy in a day or in a week or in a month. And when you're diverting that energy into 10 different tasks versus one, you're going to progress a lot less further on the 10 tasks that you're working on simultaneously versus working on one task. So your energy is going to go towards that one task. You're going to complete it uh, quicker and better right? So that is how you can become an essentialist. So make sure you make a list and you look at that list and you say, okay, what can wait until next week or tomorrow? What needs to be done right now? And that's what you choose to focus on. The next thing is be organized. Okay. When I say this, I mean, be organized on your desk, wherever you're working. That could be your kitchen table. A lot of us work remotely now. We work from home. We have distractions from our kids. We have books. We have post-it notes. Um, be organized. And I mean also on your computer. So if you can create folders, a marketing folder that then has social media, email marketing, uh, blogging, maybe you have an archive of videos, just be organized so that you can easily find things because once you start creating a lot of thought leadership and it just go, piles into your downloads file, you will never be able to find anything and it gets very frustrating. So be organized. Um, remove distractions. So earlier I said post-it notes. I work on a glass desk here. And so I have those whiteboard markers that I have notes everywhere on my desk. I erase those so they don't distract me because it is so easy to read a note and you're like, ooh, big shiny red ball. And then whatever you were just working on, you are now diverted from it. So remove any distractions you possibly can. The next thing is very important. Block time in your calendar. Okay. Most of us have a digital calendar, like a Google calendar or something like that. Make sure if you're doing 20 minutes of marketing a day, just block that time out. You could even do half an hour so you get 10 minutes to breathe. It's very, very beneficial for you to block that time on your calendar. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to fit it in. Uh, use tools and technology to your advantage. There are so many different amazing tools on the market today, and a lot of them are free that you can be using to make your marketing life easier. So make sure we will go over a couple of those today. Um, focus on thought leadership. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be giving you ideas on what to do. We're going to tell you how to focus on becoming a thought leader in your industry. And then recycle content. Recycling content is a way that you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you're creating content. So we have an archive of hundreds of blogs on our website, for example. We also have 5-Minute Marketing with Clarence. We have our old webinars that we have created. Um, and they are all either on our YouTube channel or on our website. And what I mean by recycling content is look back at some of your evergreen content that still applies today refresh it with new keywords, rewrite it, but keeping the same concepts and updating it for this, the current times. Um, if you have a blog, create a video out of that blog. If you have um, a video, create a social media post out of that. Um, you know, do, move them all around. You can have one topic that you create an email about, a social media post about, a blog, and, and any, any other type of content. So make sure you are recycling your content. 
The last thing is the 80% rule. So if any of you are perfectionists, like I used to be, I used to be perfectionist and it would be impossible for me to press send on an email that's going out to thousands of people because I was super nervous that somebody wouldn't like the content. So I learned very quickly that in marketing, you need the 80% rule, okay? If, as long as it's 80% perfect, you can press send because there are thousands of ways that you can say one marketing message and it may make somebody, one person happy and another person, they'll just look over it. So make sure you don't go to the 100% mark because you are never ever going to get there from a marketing perspective. Perfectionists are for people who are building airplanes, like the little cartoon on the right of your screen right now. If you want to build an airplane, I want you to be a, a perfectionist. If you are building a bridge, if you're an engineer, be a perfectionist. That's the right place for perfectionists. Marketing is not, there's no place for, for, for perfectionism. I can't even say it now. So make sure you remember that. And as long as it's 80% perfect, press send. Okay. All right. So does anyone out there have an editorial calendar right now? Do you have an editorial calendar? Yes or no? I would love to know. That. And if you do, not a comprehensive one. Okay. As long as there's something there, that's good. Okay. Stephanie does. Terry doesn't. Yes. Michael does. Awesome. Okay. So if you have one already, then this is going to be much easier for you. Trisha doesn't. It's okay. We will work on that. We'll help you get one. Um, and if you don't, then I'm going to explain to you exactly what an editorial calendar is and how you will achieve that. So this actually is okay. Prashant doesn't have one. So um, this is an editorial calendar. This is going to make your life so much easier. It will help you focus. It gives you an idea of a week or a month or three months out on the content that you're going to be developing, uh, whether that means social media, blogging, videos, email marketing, whatever that may be, even website content. So I'm going to show you. So this is this. A uh, template is actually courtesy of Verblio. Verblio is a platform that connects you with blog writers or content writers um, in all thousands of them in all different fields and industries so that you can hire a content writer that is specific to your industry. Um, they emailed me this to this to me one day and it is it's such a great tool. So I want to share it with everybody. I don't want you to have to reinvent the wheel. So if you would like me to send you this template, please email me after this talk and I will, um, I will send it to you. So do you research keywords before writing a blog or adding website content? Does anybody do that? <laughs> Stephanie, no, no, most people don't. I would say Diane does. Awesome. That's great. Um, so I think a lot of people look past this, they think of a great idea and then they just go with the writing and that's okay. That's better than doing nothing. Um, but it is very beneficial from an SEO perspective. If you spend five minutes doing a little bit of keyword research, and we're going to go over how you can actually do that. Okay. So we're, this is Uber suggest Neil Patel is a famous digital marketing, um, um, expert. And he came up with this tool called Uber Suggest. You can use any tools that are out there. There's a lot of free tools. This is free to a certain point. And then once you need more capabilities, you start paying for it. Um, but I think it's even like $5 a month. So it's, it's really not that steep. But um, Uber Suggest is excellent for keyword research. You take an idea or a phrase or a word. You can put it in there and they'll give you related keywords, suggested keywords. They'll give you some analytics on those keywords. And then that can help you shape your blog or any type of content that you're writing. And we'll go over this more in detail later in the talk. And have you ever used artificial intelligent tools to create content? This is a very hot topic these days. Chat GPT, awesome. We're gonna go over that a little bit. Yes, awesome. Michael says no, okay. So if you have, then you're gonna be a little more familiar with the tools. If you haven't, we'll just show you how to use it. It's very, very simple. 
All right. So this is an example of chat GPT. The URL is chat.openai.com. And I want all of you guys to create an account on there. Um, you don't have to do it now, but do it later whenever you, tr you start this plan. Um, and chat GPT is just an absolute amazing resource. It's free right now. It may not always be free. Uh, but I think most of the content that they pull up from the internet is valid until about 2021. So I want all, I want you guys to use your resources, but I always want you to fact check and and make sure you are putting um, the personal touch into all of your writing. OK, so don't just leave it 100 percent jet. AI tools and then just push it out. You always have to make sure you're checking the content, you're adding in the keywords. Um, and so this is a tool that we're definitely going to be using. So moving on, um, this is our one week schedule. I don't know what happened to the there's something behind it. That's okay. Um, and so what we are going to be doing for the one week is from Monday to Friday, Monday, we're going to be talking about thought leadership preparation, okay? And I will give you exactly the blocks of time that you're going to be spending on doing that and all of the instructions on what to do on Monday to prepare your thought leadership. We will be using the editorial calendar. On Tuesday, we are going to be creating a blog, okay? Wednesday, we are going to be doing social media posts. I'm sorry for the messed up uh, slide here. I'm not sure how that happened. Thursday, we are going to be writing an email to your for your um, email marketing list. And Friday, we're going to be updating your website. OK, I'll make sure that I fix this. If anybody needs the slides, please email me later and I can send you the PDF of the slides. OK, I'll make sure I fix this slide before we do that. All right. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Any questions? Give me a thumbs up if everyone's good. Not so far. None. Awesome. All right, let's move on. So here are some thought leadership ideas. Um, of course, you know, social media blogs, videos, emails, those are the regular ones that people create all the time. Um, but there's more than that. And I like to give people this slide um, for ideas on thought leadership because some people are very stuck on what they should be doing. And if you are in the financial, um, you know, financial planning or wealth management field, or you're a consultant, it's so good to have diversity in your content so that you're not just like all the other competitors out there, because there's a lot of you, right. And you want to differentiate yourself. So you can do that through the thought leadership ideas that you come up with. Some of them are case studies. These are amazing. And I know that financial planning with SEC and FINRA rules, I understand that with compliance, you can't always do a, an in-depth case study, but you can be vague on them. And so I want you to do that. Is broad, however broad you're allowed to be, make sure that you create case studies. And we all have them. If you have clients right now, you have a case study to talk about. OK, white papers are also great. This is good for showing the application of your work. Um, you know, what it actually means in the real world. Reports are really big, and especially in wealth management. Ebooks, articles, um, you can give them guides, templates, roadmaps, tips and tricks sheets, um, anything like that. Research studies are great. And then you can invite people to your webinars and podcasts, any type of event that you're that you you are participating in, conferences, roundtables, or panel discussions. And then you have your infographics and visual content. And then if something exciting is happening at your business, you can push out a press release on the wire. So these are just some of the thought leadership ideas that I want you all to be thinking about as we go through this uh, webinar. Now, let's move on to Monday. I hope everyone's good. If you have questions, you guys just interrupt me and put them in the chat and I will answer them. OK. So on Monday, we are preparing our thought leadership. We are going to be using the editorial calendar and we're going to be doing this in 20 minutes in a day. All right. So your Monday plan is for you to spend the first five minutes 
to come up with a list of FAQs. You need maybe about five of them that your prospects or your current clients would be coming to you with. OK, this is the first thing I want you to do. Come up with a list of frequently asked questions that your target audience would ask you if you are on a phone call with them. All right. The next five minutes, I want you to bring these FAQs into Uber Suggest. OK, just one of them. You can just bring one. You can also explore with a couple of them. But think of the most common one that you chose from your list, whether it's five or ten or whatever. The most common one that most people would actually ask you, bring that into Uber Suggest, and I'm going to show you exactly, you know, what to do in the slides after this. Um, and then they will, and then I'll show you how to actually collect the keywords. The next five minutes, you're going to be taking the keywords that Uber Suggest suggested for you, and you are going to ask ChatGPT. You're going to copy and paste them. You are going to ask ChatGPT to come up with topics that your target audience would like to read about based on those keywords. And I want you to be very um, detailed when you, when describing anything in ChatGPT. The more details you can give them, the more they learn about you and the more content that they are going to provide for you, the, the more targeted content. Then the last five minutes, we you're going to take filling in your first week on the editorial calendar, okay? So let's just go over that again. Um, so the first five minutes, you're going to create the FAQs. You're going to bring that into Uber Suggest, okay? So let's just say financial planning for seniors, okay? I just kind of came up with that. Um, that could be a long tail keyword that you could use to suggest other ideas, to find suggestions for other keyword ideas. Then once you click search on that, if you scroll down, you'll see keyword ideas up at the top. And then if you see suggestions, the tabs along the top, related questions, those, those tabs are gonna give you different keywords on Uber Suggest. And on the left, you'll see the actual keyword they're suggesting. You'll see volume, which tells you how many people per month search for that. You have cost per click. That's not really important here. What is important is your SEO difficulty on the far right-hand column. If that is under 40, I want you to take that keyword if it pertains to your business. If it doesn't, you can leave the keyword. But if it has something to do with your business, take it. SEO difficulty means how much competition there is out there for that keyword. So when you're looking at like the car industry or hotels, it is there are barely any keywords that are under 40, right? But a lot of under in other industries that aren't as competitive, you're going to have a lot more that are under 40. If you find that there are none under 40, just take the lowest number there. All right. Does anyone have any questions about Uber Suggest right now before I go into the next step? Does this all make sense? And you don't have to use Uber Suggest. Not, nobody pays me for this. <laughs> this is just the tool that I like. Um, so no, no questions on that. I'm, I'm going to keep going. Um, is the free version worth it or should I upgrade? Um, the free version will limit you to a certain amount of searches. If you tend to search more than, I think it's three per day. If you search for more than three a day, then you're going to want to pay for it. If not, just try it out and see if you can get away with a free version. Good question, Diane. Um, all right. So after Uber suggests, when you take those keywords down, I want you to take the copy and paste them into chat GPT into the send a message at the bottom little search bar down there. I want you to ask them to come up with um, topics for your target market and then describe your target market. Play around with your language um, because that's going to really help you and it'll it'll become very accurate. Once ChatGPT comes up with a list of um, FAQs for you, then or or topics, then you can bring those into. Uh, let me just go back really quickly into your editorial calendar. So that's the last step, and then you will you will uh, you'll see the the dates of the days of the week. You just have to do this for five days because you're going to do this every Monday. OK, and especially if you're in an industry that changes all the time, the wealth management industry changes every hour, it seems right with the stock markets changing and everything. 
So you want to make sure that you're staying up to date on these. So don't go to, too far ahead. If you have a lot of evergreen content, you can go a month ahead if you want um, or even more. But if you have content that is all, all, always needs to be up with current events, then um, then definitely just keep it to a week and then make this a habit of every Monday you just refresh this. It doesn't take that long. So once you are finished that, you are done your Monday and you have prepared all of your thought leadership on your editorial calendar. Um, you will see um, all the different uh, columns that you have to fill in. And um, if if something if you don't know something, you can either email me and ask me about what that means or just leave it blank. As long as you have the topics and some keywords there, that's the main thing. OK. All right. Um, thumbs up if we are good on Monday. Does this all make sense? It's definitely doable in 20 minutes because I have done it. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Let's move on to blogging in 20 minutes on Tuesdays. All right. Okay, so your Tuesday plan is you are going to choose a topic from your editorial calendar. The one that you prepared yesterday on Monday, you are then now gonna choose one of those topics to write about. Um, it doesn't have to be your Monday or your Tuesday. It can be any of them because you're writing one blog a week. So the next, that's gonna take you one minute. It won't take you five minutes, but I'm, I'm trying to give you enough time on these things. The next five minute, increment of time, you are going to then ask GPT to create, let's say a six to 800 word blog about whichever topic you chose from your editorial calendar and targeting your specific audience and be as specific as possible. I really want you to use as much detail as possible here. Okay. So ask them to come up with this blog. If you do not like the blog that they come up with, tell them to regenerate it. You might not like the tone of voice. It might be too professional. It might not be professional enough. If you want them to use humor in it, say, please use hu humor in the tone. I'm telling you, it is these tools are incredible and you can really tweak them so that you're speaking through your own character by just giving chat GPT some direction. OK, then I want you to spend the next 10 minutes editing your blog and I want you to aim for 30 percent. All right. And this shouldn't take you a long time. This should not. Th th this is designed to do most of the work for you. But I want you to aim for 30 percent. Make sure you're fact check checking. It's so hard for me to say that <laughs> because, again, chat GPT doesn't always come up with the most current content. And most of you need to be on top of current events and making sure that you're with the times. So just make sure you fact check. And also give it your own voice, right? Give it a personal touch. And then I want you to also find an image to go with your blog. You can do that on pexels.com. There are so many different free resources for, uh, for finding free images. All right. And this is just your step-by-step, -step, just visually. Um, one thing I want you to remember is that when you are copying and pasting from step two in chat GPT, once they come up with a blog, in order for you to edit that content, I want you to highlight it all, right click or double click, depending on a Mac or a PC, bring it into a Word document or a Google Doc. And when you paste it, don't do control V. I want you to do to double click or right click your mouse and do paste without formatting. That is going to paste it into your document without the gray background, which drives me crazy. So every time I copy and paste from ChatGPT, I thought they did it purposely to stop you from copy and pasting it, but really that's what it's there for. So if you don't want that gray haze behind your, um, behind your text, then just uh, right click and paste without formatting and it will be white background just like normal. All right. Um, then you can find an image for your blog after that. All right. Does anyone have any questions about Tuesday? Is everyone good? Yes. If you're good in the chat. All good. Thank you, Diane. All good. Thanks, Trisha. Awesome. Thank you, Emily, Michael. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna move on to Wednesday. 
Our Wednesday is going to be dedicated to creating five social media posts. And that way you can schedule them out the following week and you'll have five posts a week going. All right. So the first thing I want you to do, if you not, if you are not already posting on social media, I want you to leverage technology. So you can use scheduling tools that are very inexpensive, like Buffer or Hootsuite or Sprout Social, and there's dozens more out there now. Um, but these are just a few of the big ones. These are scheduling tools. So you can create a post right in the scheduler. You can press send and link all of your social media business pages or your personal pages to the scheduler. And then once you press send once, it will be sent out to every one of those pages, okay, at the same time. So um, you can also find artificial intelligent tools that are built right into these technology platforms so that it can help you create the posts, which is really awesome. And then you will also be utilizing your editorial calendar for this, okay? So your Wednesday plan, you are going to spend the first 10 minutes creating five posts on your scheduler using your editorial calendar. Remember I told you on Monday, you prepared thought leadership using Uber Suggest and ChatGPT to come up with topics that you populated into the first five days of your editorial calendar. That's what you're going to use to create these posts. That way you're not reinventing the wheel. You're not trying to pull ideas out of the sky. It's going to help you guide. It's going to help guide you to what type of content you can put out there. And remember, you can talk about, it doesn't always have to be um, answering a question. It can be, um, here's uh, the top keyword of the week. And then you explain a keyword in your industry that a lot of people get wrong, or maybe they don't understand. You could define that. Um, you could talk about testimonial Tuesdays. You could put out a video if you have an archive of them. You can do facts. You can do, um, you know, you can promote your services, whatever that may be. Um, but definitely let that editorial calendar guide you. The next five minutes, I want you to find images. You can go to pexels.com. That's a, a free resource. There's a lot of other ones. And I also want you to choose hashtags. You can do this by going on each of your social media platforms and looking up hashtags in using keywords in your target uh, market, okay? So, or in your industry. So, um, and then that's how, where, how you're gonna know, okay, this one only has 12 people, this one has 12,000 people kind of thing. So you'll know where the traffic is by doing a little bit of hashtag research. Um, then the last five minutes on Wednesday, you are going to actually schedule the content for the following week. And when you create these posts, I want you to create them right in your scheduler. There is no reason to put it on a Word document first or, or a Google Sheets or something like that. Put it right in your scheduler. There's no reason to take that extra step, all right? And then uh, find your images and your hashtags and then schedule out the content for the following week. Does anyone have any questions about Wednesday's plan? And so far, is this doable? Does this make sense to you guys? It's, it's pretty simple, right? It's literally 20 minutes a day. So awesome. Okay, that's great. All right, let's move on to Thursday, which is email marketing in 20 minutes a day. Now, on Thursday and on Friday, we are adding on five minutes that's optional that you guys do not have to do, but it's a little more involved than the other three days of the week. So if you want to add in that extra five minutes a day, you can put it to 25 instead of 20, but you don't have to do that to get this finished. All right, so first question, do you currently send out marketing emails? Do you have an email marketing list? Um, are you doing this actively about once a week? That's good, Diane, that's great. Michael, yes, that's awesome. Stephanie, yes, good, this is really great. So you may not even need this. Monthly, that's good. Awesome. All right. Okay, so let's see if this might make your lives easier when creating the content. Um, all right, so the first 10 minutes of Thursday, you are going to choose a topic from your editorial calendar, and then you are going to create a freebie checklist for your target market. 
You can use ChatGP to help you if you want, if you can't come up with this by yourself. Um, but I want you to be creative with your freebie. So for example, um, we our last freebie, we came out with a checklist for financial planners when trying to be compliant from a marketing perspective. So what are all the things you have to think about to be compliant, which is a huge thing with financial planners, right? They're, you're so limited in what you can put push out there from a marketing perspective that you have to be very careful. So we provided a checklist that we thought would be very valuable in the lives of our target audience. So if you can think in terms of who your target audience is, what that checklist would be. So earlier, um, a few weeks ago, I met a financial planner. They focus on seniors. That's their, it's kind of funny because you should be planning your finances long before you become a senior, but they, you know, they're targeting the people who didn't do that or maybe who did, but want to switch financial planners, whatever that may be. But a checklist for, you know, for seniors to prepare for their retirement even though they should already be in retirement, but that's like a target niche, right? That's a market that probably a lot of people have not done. So a checklist would be a really good thing for them. It would be valuable content for them. So if you can think of a freebie that would help your target audience, that's what I want you thinking about here. And if you need wording help, then go to ChatGP to help you with that. The next five minutes is optional. Once you come up with a document, your checklist, you could go to canva.com, which is an extremely user-friendly software, very cheap. It's actually free most of the time, unless you have a team. Um, so you could use that and you could make your checklist look pretty. Okay. You could use your branding colors, whatever, add your logo to it. You do not have to do this for you to add value, but I just thought it would be a, a professional way if you wanted to spend that extra five minutes. Uh, once you do that, the next five minutes, I want you to draft a short email telling your target audience the benefits of this freebie, short and sweet, under 150 words, okay? I want you to then link the freebie to where they can find it on your website. If you do not know how to do this, you might have a web developer that comes by once a month and they only do a little bit of work, maybe security or something. If you don't have a person on your team that can easily do this or if you don't know how to do this, that is no problem. Just tell them to reply to your email and you will send it to them personally, which makes them actually feel special, right? So when I do that type of thing, they feel special that the owner of the company is actually sending them something. So it may be even more beneficial if you do um, send them the PDF or whatever form of format of the file is. Um, and then the last five minutes, I want you to send or schedule your email out to your list. OK, make sure you are segmenting your list. Do not send everything to everybody. Make sure it is value. The content you're creating on your emails is valuable to only the segment you're sending it to. All right. Newsletters once in a while to everybody is OK. To what's going on at our business, all that kind of stuff. But as much as you can segment your list, if you have different revenue streams, like people for who are saving up for college, is very different than, um, you know, seniors who are already retiring. So that's what I mean by segmenting. Know who your audience is and then alter your content on your emails to be speaking to them only. Do we have any questions about our Thursday? We are almost done. All good. Awesome. Anyone else? No questions? If you do, you can interrupt me. No problem. We are moving on to the last day of the week, and this is for you to update your website in 20 minutes a day. All right. So the first 10 minutes, you may be wondering on Tuesday, you write, wrote a blog and we never talked about promoting that blog, but this is when we're going to be doing that. Um, also moving back, that blog can also be promoted on your social media posts. Okay. So once you create the blog, that can become part of your content for the following week. And then your, your social media posts, one of them that week can link to the blog that you wrote either the day before or the week before. Okay. So that's just gives, giving you an idea um, for another social media post. 
So the first 10 minutes, you are going to be posting your blog on your website. Most websites these days are very easy and user friendly on the back end um, for you to. And there's a blog section where you just click the little plus button. You post a blog, you add an image and there you go. If your website is not that user friendly, you should update it. <laughs> if not, um, you know, find I'm, there's probably somebody on your team or externally that you use to do this. So you could always delegate this to them, but post the blog on your website and remember to create meta descriptions and add some keywords and title tags for each of your blogs. This is for SEO purposes. Okay. Search engine optimization. Google will like your website better if you not only post a blog once a week, to add more valuable content for your target audience. But also if you're speaking to Google and not the public, Google will then know that your meta description is what they are gonna pull from that blog to give them that little snippet on the search engine results page. That's what the meta descriptions are. The title tag is the same. What title do you want them to see above that little meta description paragraph? So that all comes up on the search engine results page. If you do not have this, Google will go in there and pull what they think is relevant. It's not always relevant, let me tell you. So even though Google is getting smarter, but you have to outsmart them and actually provide them the meta descriptions, okay? Uh, the next five minutes, you are going to update any content that needs it, okay? A lot of you have update that goes obsolete or it expires or some, you know, maybe rates for, for last month are not the rates for this month. Make sure you are going into this once a week or more and updating it. So Friday can be that day. Uh, we also, sometimes our services change, right? We, our businesses are changing all the time. We're always evolving. So make sure you are updating any type of descriptions for services, your contact information, your hours of operation, whatever that may be, make sure you are updating that. Okay. Then I want you to spend another five minutes checking the analytics of your emails that you sent out going on your website um, for, for Google Analytics and uh, Google Search Console, you can check those tools to see your analytics for your website. I'm going to go over that in the next slide and, um, and your social media. Okay, so just spend five minutes being aware. How many followers do you have? How much traffic do you have on your website this week? Um, you know, how many, op what's your open rates for your emails? What are your click rates? If you have low open rates, fix your subject lines. If your open rates are great, but your click rates are not are low, then fix your call to actions inside or fix your, your content inside your emails. And then the last five minutes, which is optional, I want you to add or gate any of those freebies or content that you need on your website for the future. What I mean by gate is that if you are giving somebody a free piece of content, ask in return for their email address. This is a lead generation tool where you can say, I am giving you this. If you give me your email and maybe your phone number, your name, whatever you want to collect. The this, obviously, the, the less information you're collecting, the more, the more responses you're going to get because people really aren't, they don't like to give away their information all the time. But if you're giving away super valuable content, they're going to give you what you want. So it's a way for you to add to your email marketing list. Okay. And that's optional. You don't have to do that. Um, most people need plugins to gate their content on, on their websites. Um, if you have questions after you can ask about that. Um, so let's move on quickly to what I mean by analytics and what you should be tracking on which channel. So we talked today about updating your website, your social media, your email, um, on your website, I want you to add Google Search Console to your DNS, um, allow them access. If you don't know how to do that, you can contact me after. I can give you a link to a little video on how to do that. Um, Google Analytics 4, now Universal Analytics as of July is, is obsolete. It doesn't work anymore. If you have not installed Google Analytics 4 on your website, please make sure you do that. And the very high level basic things you should be tracking on your website from Google, Google Analytics is your unique visitors, uh, your bounce rates, your organic search, 
your referrals and your keywords. Your keywords you can find on Google Search Console. You can also find impressions on Google Search Console. So anytime someone typed in a keyword, how many times your website actually popped up. And then from that, that's an impression, from that, how many people actually clicked on it. Um, Google Search Console can tell you that information. Google Analytics 4 will tell you your unique visitors, your bounce rates, your organic search traffic and where your referrals came from. This is all really good metrics to track so that you can understand the progress of your website over the weeks and the months, all right? The next channel is social media. So all of those Buffer, Hootsuite, Sprout Social, any of your schedulers are going to have a reporting and analytics section with dashboards so that you don't have to go on every single channel and look on your Facebook, on your Twitter, on your Instagram, on your LinkedIn, and look at what are my followers? What are my likes? What are my clicks? What are my com comments? Those are the things I want you to be tracking, okay? These schedulers will have dashboards that tell you all of that. They will tell you all of that accumulated on all of the channels, and they will also tell you all of that on the specific channels. Um, so definitely be aware of what is going on for each of these channels. The next one is your email marketing. So you can use MailChimp or Constant Contact, HubSpot, Salesforce, Pardot, wh whichever tool that you are using for email marketing. I want you to be very aware of your open rates, your click rates, and your unsubscribes or bounces, okay? Your unsubscribes or bounces, if those are really high, you will either be shut down, um, they will actually like pause your, your campaigns because they think that your list is probably is spammy or, um, or, uh, and it tells you that your list is, is just not that like the emails on your list is not up to date. So make sure that you are scrubbing your lists and making sure the emails on them are validated. So that's why I want you to keep track of your unsubscribes and then get rid of them off your list. If they unsubscribe or they bounce, um, open rates should be, I mean, every industry is very different. Hopefully you're above the 20% rate. Um, clicks, you want, you know, anywhere between one and 5%, the higher, the better. Um, it all depends on the industry. So I can't even really give you those, um, you know, those milestones to reach because every industry is different. But these are the things that you, very high level, the things that you should be tracking when it comes to your marketing. And then I'm just going to leave you with this last bit. Um, this is the value ladder. This is from Russell Brunson, who wrote the dot com secret trilogy. He is amazing. And um, I am a huge fan of him. And so he created this value ladder, which really puts into perspective how you should be using your content when you're promoting your services. OK, so on the Y axis, you see price on the X axis, you see value. So as the arrows go away from the center, you're increasing in price as you're increasing in the value that you're giving to your community. All right. So it starts with a free offer at the very bottom, that little white staircase. We're going to call this the staircase. OK, and so what I want you to do is create lead funnels for each level of value that you're providing. And then when a prospect successfully completes the call to action on one of the levels, then you are going to give them um, the next lead funnel. So if somebody comes on your uh, uh, free value could be your checklist that you're giving on your emails. It could be blogs. It could be um, a webinar like this. So if somebody shows interest on your webinar, you then will, they will then go into, let's tag them as a warm lead. And now you want to move to the next level of value that you are offering. It could be a course or you're selling a book or whatever that may be for a little bit. You're asking them, you know, to sign on and take out their credit cards to pay for a little bit more value. So you suck them in from the value, not suck them in, but you convince them to trust in your content because they loved the free value so much that they are willing to trust you enough to pay for a little more value. And then you bring out the big ticket items. Once they come in at your lower value items or your mid-level value items, then you wanna bring, bring out the high ticket value items where they're paying more for it 
um, but they've already trusted you several times before that. So they know that they're getting really good value from you on those high ticket items. So that's how I want you to think about progress, progressing your content when you're delivering it to your list. Okay. And I am going to now end that um, with our next webinar, which are for wealth management firms, um, the best social media archiving tools for wealth management firms. And we'll go over some of those. We'll talk a little bit about compliance. Um, it'll probably be a shorter webinar, but we'll probably have a lot of Q&A at the end. Also, if you are not sure about your marketing, you don't think you have time for it, you just don't know what you need, you, you want to learn where your gaps are, um, we can give you a free marketing audit, uh, no strings attached. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I know time is precious these days. We don't have a lot of it. Um, so I truly appreciate you being here. And I hope everybody has a lovely rest of your week.